Well, she's been associated with the firm for more than 50 years, but Camilla Parker Bowles' rise to royalty was certainly no easy feat, from the most hated woman in the world to now Queen Camilla. How the woman who has stood by King Charles' side from the beginning has also stood the test of time. The King first met his Queen in 1970, but their love story has not been without its challenges. Camilla Parker Bowles was long known as the other woman in the world's most scandalous divorce. Do you think Mrs Parker Bowles was a factor in the breakdown of your marriage? Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. For years, she was branded a royal mistress even the most hated woman in Britain. A love story that you couldn't beat, really. There's not many women who would wait 35 years for their boyfriend to actually propose. He and Camilla did decide that once he got engaged to Diana, they wouldn't see each other at all. And they did this for about eight years. It all came to a head in 1993, when an intimate conversation between the two was leaked, ultimately, ending both of their marriages. She has been a friend for a very long time, and uh, along with a lot of other friends, and will continue to be a friend for a very long time. Then, just a few years later... Confirmation from our very own Foreign Secretary, Robin Cook. Diana, Princess of Wales, has in fact been killed in that car accident. It happened just after midnight, Paris time, at 10 this morning in Brisbane. In 1997, the world was stunned by the death of Princess Diana and the hatred towards Camilla ramped up. And they accused Camilla of killing her. They're blaming her. Must have been hell to be attacked like that. She said that afterwards that um, it was her family and her friends that really helped her survive and it was very, very difficult. It left her on the outer, even within palace walls. But over the years, she's undergone something of a PR masterclass, slowly winning the hearts of the people and the respect of the late Queen. At first, she wouldn't speak to her or go anywhere where she was. She avoided her. Gradually, the Queen and Prince Philip could see that she was making a fantastically good impression. She knew what was expected of her and she started doing lots of charitable work because she felt once she'd sort of been accepted she could help people who were in difficult situation. In February 2005 Charles and Camilla decided to go for it for better or worse announcing their engagement. Less than two months later they were finally married 35 years after they first met. Clarence House released a statement confirming Camilla would pass on her rightful title of Princess of Wales and instead go by the lesser Duchess of Cornwall. It also announced that should Charles become king, Camilla would not become Queen Consort, but rather Princess Consort. This was a nonsense because if somebody marries a king, they become queen. So it was really rather demeaning, but they did that because they were worried that the public were still against her and wouldn't like to see the Queen with her name. During the Platinum Jubilee, the late Queen Elizabeth put an end to the rumours, sharing in a statement that it was her sincere wish Camilla be named Queen Consort when Charles took the throne. May 6 will mark the first double coronation since 1937 and Camilla can begin her new legacy. The things that she cares about, that is books and literacy, she wants to get rid of domestic violence, old people who are on their own, um, families who have children who are very, very ill and won't survive, and um, those sort of charities. And she's done them all in these last few months since the Queen died. She's continued doing them. And this is her really saying, this is my job.